Success for me is in the stories of when kids see themselves as scientists. My most recent research has been focused on science-mindedness. And this science-mindedness idea is just looking at the skills, traits, dispositions, attributes of the most prolific scientists of our time. What made Einstein Einstein? Uh, what made Kakuli Kakuli? What made Niels Bohr Niels Bohr? We realize that they're inquisitive, um, that they, they, they have keen observation skills, that they're anti-establishment, they're anti-authoritarian, um, that they're deeply reflective, that they draw seemingly disparate ideas together through metaphor and analogy. The work was then to find where else do we find a population that exhibits these same characteristics? And I find them within hip hop. I find them in rappers. I find them in Nas and Jay-Z and Kendrick Lamar. I find them in the young people in schools today who are engaged in the Science Genius Project, that all the skills you want of a scientist, you find in rappers. So that's why we are, we're doing this project, Science Genius, because Science Genius allows young people to see their science-mindedness as a thing that can help them to be successful in science. And so in a nutshell, that's Science Genius and the Science Genius battles. Genius is... Uh, generating IUS, interest in urban science, um, and battles is the rap battle, but it also stands for bringing attention to transforming teaching, learning, and engagement in science. Um, and the idea is just that, that we want to generate interest in urban schools or in urban science by bringing attention to how we transform teaching, learning, and engagement uh, with young people. So in hip hop, the battle is when you have one MC versus one MC. They have crafted their raps, they come with their crew, and they are going to compete to show who is the best rapper. And so we've taken this idea of the hip hop battle and extended that to include the science genius battle, where you have young people who will go and study their science text and information. In their schools, they will be able to learn science through rhyme, and they will craft raps that are immersed in science. These are young people who are listening to hip hop, writing hip hop, living and breathing hip hop already, and we're just merging science into that. If you've noticed, I've said we, and we, and we, um, because it's a partnership with Jizza from the Wu-Tang Clan. Jizza's story is the story of so many young people, he was pushed out of school because it didn't capture his imagination, didn't capture his interest. And so he is so deeply entrenched in this project because he, he wants to change the narrative for kids like him. Jizza is a science geek as well, deeply immersed in science, inquisitive about the universe, and he's gonna be like a coach, you know, to supporting the kids in writing their science rap, teaching them what the art of rhyme and hip hop is. We've said from the beginning, we are not gonna accept nursery school rhymes. You're not gonna come in here and say, hey, I'm here to play, it's DNA. We are turning up the, the responsibility for the young people to engage in hip hop differently. We are changing the narrative of commercial hip hop. We have 10 schools so far. In each of those 10 schools, they will have science battles where each school will sort of declare their science genius. The science genius in each of those schools will battle against geniuses in another uh, in other schools until we have this one big event. It's gonna be the 10 science geniuses from these 10 selected schools. There will be rappers in the audience. There will be scientists in the audience. There will be educators in the audience. There will be media in the audience. And we will judge to see who the top science genius is. And that person will be the science genius of New York City. We picked schools where people wouldn't say later, oh, these kids are doing great because they've always done great. They are the prototypical New York City public schools, uh, students with, with low socioeconomic status, neighborhoods that are struggling, high incarceration rates in those neighborhoods. So we've, we've gone to the places where um, a lot of people don't go. We've gone to the places where um, the young people need us the most. You know, everyone's asked me about how, how do you gauge success? You know, what kind of pretests and post-tests would you use? You know, what kind of comparative groups will you use? And, you know, I will follow the protocol of existing research to measure you know, how kids engage in classrooms, if they have increased test scores or not. The real story is when a, a kid's gonna say to me, man, I was writing this rap and I couldn't get any information, so I was up all night researching. Um, the real story is when a kid says, you know what, I was reading the New York Times, um, Science Times on Tuesday, and I was intrigued about this article. Um, success for me is in the stories of when kids see themselves as scientists. Conventional methods for uh, measuring success will be used, um, but to me, real research is in the rich and thick descriptions of what works, what doesn't work, 
how it works, and, and how kids experience this approach differently. I'm Christopher Emden. You need to subscribe to Thinker like yesterday.